welcome back to Obscurus Gaming, and today I'm reviewing World of Goo 2, the sequel to one of the most beloved WiiWare games ever released all the way back from 2008. It has since been a re-released game to the Switch, and Super Rare Games even made a physical for it this past year that I had to pick up. Now, when the original came out, I absolutely loved it, so much so that I was hoping for a sequel at that time, but the developers moved on to some other projects and games that I just never found all that interesting or fun. While well, over 15 years later, we finally got that sequel that I always wanted. So let's see if World of Goo 2 can match the near perfection of the original game. In World of Goo 2, you'll be playing through about 60 or so levels where your goal is usually to get a certain amount of goo balls to the exit pipe. In order to do so, you will be selecting the goo balls using the on-screen cursor, interacting with the environments and other goo balls themselves. The main mechanic is combining them with each other to form bridges and towers, but it does evolve considerably from there, which I'll talk about in a bit. Each level has a minimum goo ball requirement in order to advance, but there are also three side goals of having to either clear the level under a certain time, use only a certain number of moves, or a more extreme goo ball exit requirement. The game can also be played locally in couch co-op, but other than the speed challenges, this might actually be more of a hindrance, and I actually think single player works better here. The game is spread out over five chapters, played over a few goofy cutscenes and sarcastic notes from signs you can read on most levels. Each of these chapters introduces new gameplay mechanics, often in the form of different kinds of goo balls. For example, in chapter one, the game introduces balloon and clear balls early on, which give you the ability to float or tether structures or move liquid goo from one side of the level to another. These all play off of one another in increasingly difficult levels. Although nothing is mind bending per se, especially if you played through the first game, there is plenty of challenge here to keep you engaged, especially if you try to go for the bonus challenges on each level. Besides the different types of goo balls you will use to solve puzzles, World of Goo 2 branches out a bit by introducing liquid goo, an occasional time component, and some other interesting ideas. If you've played the first, you'll appreciate some of these new ways to solve puzzles, even if they might only kind of last for a level or two before the game moves on to something else. Something that fans of the first game will recognize pretty much immediately is the game's art style, lovely music, and its sarcastic and weird presentation. These things were all praised in the first and gave it a lot of charm, and World of Goo 2 captures that exact same feeling as the original. It's nice to see the developers take a if it ain't broke don't fix it approach here which also helps to create an increased level of continuity between the two games. It's easy to just kind of sit back, smile, and enjoy this weird world, and that is impressive for a level-based puzzle game with not much of a story. I do want to take a second here and talk about the controls. The original World of Goo was made with Wii remotes in mind, hence the on-screen cursor, which was more accurate and intuitive than Switch gyro controls. I've always found the gyro controls for the Joy-Cons to be imprecise and a little annoying, so I actually used the Pro Controller for most of my playthrough. It should be noted that Pro Controller support wasn't released until a couple weeks after the game, so many people playing or reviewing this at launch didn't have that as an option, and I was able to switch about halfway through my playthrough to the Pro Controller. Whenever the gyro controls on either controller get a bit out of whack, which they definitely will, there is a quick cursor reset button similar to other Switch games that rely on gyro controls. 
The results control well enough, but not as tightly as you might like for a game that occasionally requires quick and precise selections. So yeah, that is pretty much it to World of Goo 2 without ruining some of the late gameplay surprises. It's exactly what you would expect as a sequel to the first game, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. The art, the music, and gameplay is all spot on, just like the first. It'll give you maybe 10 or so hours of gameplay, and anyone who played the first game will love almost every minute of it, even with the occasional level that doesn't hit with the same perfection as the original. And by the way, that playtime count will increase significantly if you're going through all the challenges. Anyways, I strongly recommend this to anyone who enjoys puzzle games, and it gets a very strong 84 grade from me, and I'm personally thankful I'm able to take another trip to the World of Goo universe. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.